Bobcats, and you gotta know where their scorers are. They will stretch your defense out. You have to know where those shooters are at. Both of these teams so very strong in the backcourt. Opening tap is controlled by the Trojans of Troy. Welcome to college basketball in the 2023-24 season. Troy out of the Sunbelt Conference, Ohio, from the Mid-American Conference, and we are underway. Ohio with Jalen Hunter, Miles Brown, Elmore James, A.J. Brown, and A.J. Clayton. There you see the first five on the floor for the Trojans of Troy. Miles Rigsby, Christian Eugene, he prefers to go by Spud. Jackson Field, we touched on Amir Muhammad a moment ago, and Theo Sang is the last of the five on the floor for Coach Scott Cross and his Troy Trojans. Again, here is the Ohio five on the floor. As you see them at the bottom of your screen, A.J. Clayton will be the inside presence for a team that will try to figure out how to handle that part of the game this season. A.J. Brown's three is off the mark. And the rebound yanked out of the air by Amir Muhammad of Troy. They quickly run back, gliding in for the first points of the night to Spud Eugene. Well, they will push the ball at every opportunity. Off turnovers, off made shots. The Trojans love to push the ball up and down the floor. Troy has played an opener on Monday. They rolled past Fort Lauderdale, 92 to 47. Jalen Hunter's attempt at the tie is off the mark. Good hustle and the offensive rebound by Elmore James, and the Bobcats will reset. Ohio's had a couple of scrimmages. Duquesne and Otterbein, and the three by A.J. Brown gives Ohio its first lead of the season. Yeah, good offensive rebound to keep that possession alive, Marty, and that's what you have to do against a team you probably a little bit size-wise. Matchups are not bad. That young man there is going to try to force the issue. A.J. Brown healthy to start this season, unlike last year when he dealt with that shoulder, which slowed him down, and he has been a big bonus early on. He'll attempt another three that's off the mark, and the rebound into the hands of Theo Sang of Troy. Out of the Sun Belt Conference last year, Scott Cross's team went 20 and 13. However, they have 11 new players on this year's roster. A.J. Brown flipped as he went airborne, and a turnover is the call of travel on Troy. They have just five returnees from that team last year. Amir Mohammed, Spud Eugene, along with Jackson Field, and Cam Mitchell. Well, there's the action underneath there. It's going to be an out-of-bounds here. The turnover, the travel, and Ohio with the basketball. That's the one thing that's very different about these teams. While they have 11 newcomers, Ohio lost, even though they did lose a couple of key performers off last year's team, for the most part, the Bobcats return intact, of course, losing Dwight Wilson and Devon Baker from last year's 19-win team. Here's Hunter spotting up and knocking down another three. Well, I think that's one thing we'll see from this Bobcat team is Scott Cross going to call a timeout. Ohio gets a couple of threes early on in the Bobcats. Have a 6-2 with adjustments in the offseason, knowing what his personnel is. And that's what coaches have to do, and I think he's done a good job. Uh, both you and I have seen them in person a little bit, but I think Jeff has gotten this team to understand we're going to play a certain way, but we've got to play with discipline as well. In his fifth year, both these coaches, in fact, in their fifth year, guiding their respective programs. Ohio with a couple of threes to start. After giving up the nice first bucket, the Bobcats have scored six straight. Ohio man defensively. Tough look inside for Sang, who's able to recover. The reset into the lane. Now here's Miles Rigsby. Lost it, got it back, and missed the look in the lane. And A.J. Clayton comes away with a miss for Ohio. And the Bobcats sprint back. Good look by Hunter. Miles Brown penetrates and misses the runner. And Sang another rebound for Troy. Back run the Trojans with the basketball. 92 points in that win over Fort Lauderdale on Monday. A school member of the National Christian Junior Collegiate Association. The three out high, rims and rolls around and out by Eugene. And the ball knocked out of bounds and will belong with the Troy Trojans. In that game, Troy held Fort Lauderdale to one for 11 from behind the three-point arc. Ohio's already knocked down a couple in this game. And the Trojans put that win away on Monday with a 14-0 run in the second half. They had a big spurt in the first half of that game as well, too. Both teams have started in their man-to-man -man defense. Ohio probably going to do a little more switching than anything. Nice job by A.J. Clayton, Dave. Using yep. the baseline as a defender right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Pressure right there. And again, you know, pressure kind of wears on you during the course of a game. It kind of comes out of the gate a little bit. And as this game unfolds, you'll see Jeff Bull's team continue to increase that pressure. 
especially if they know that the Trojans are not going to handle the ball with great care. And it's interesting when you look at what Ohio did in their exhibition games in their scrimmage at Duquesne and then the game with Otterbein last week. Those games were done for a reason. Both teams very scrappy, very uh, aggressive in the backcourt, and that's what Ohio is going to see a lot of out of this Troy team tonight. That's exactly right. Good look into the lane for Clayton. Ball's loose in the floor, and it will belong to the Troy Trojans. We are three and a half minutes into this one, Ohio with the four-point advantage at 62. Good look at A.J. Clayton, 6'8", 225-pound junior from Philo High School in Roseville, Ohio. The Philo Electrics. First change of the night, Randarius Jones, a 6'7", 235-pound junior that head coach Scott Cross talked about earlier in the week. He's very high on this young man. Gave him a lot of presence around the basket in the game against Fort Lauderdale and in their scrimmage as well, too. He liked what that young man gives them up front. And this is a little... New look that you'll see a lot from the high Bobcats. Full court pressure. That time paid great dividends with the turnover. Clayton comes away with the basketball, and Ohio looks to push back. Hunter, preseason Mid-American Conference first team choice. Last year, 13 points, three rebounds a game. Miles Brown back for his fifth year. Steadying influence in that backcourt. Jeff Bowles called him the Linus of this team with the, the blanket and the comfort. And we have a blocking foul and a timeout. A little over four minutes into the season opener tonight here at the Convocation Center. Ohio and Troy in the Mac Sun Belt. And while not certainly the best of friends, they are acquaintances. They do know each other. There you see Jeff Bowles' resume. 133 wins as a collegiate head coach. Stability in the coaching staff, very big as well, too. All of his assistants are back this year. Yeah, and I'm just going to say, Marty, that would point on right there. You know, once your staff all comes back, everybody helps with your continuity they understand your ins and outs and how you like things done how about the pass it's on the inside inside the Wisnitzer from Sharif Mitchell and a foul inside on Troy a nice set play coming out of the timeout for the Bobcats really got a high low situation there Wiz got himself in a, in a good position player on his hip the ability to kind of get himself into the game right away Dave, the one thing you notice about Gabe Wisnitzer as you look at him, he slid down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, every coach on the Ohio staff you talked to said, uh, well, he did struggle last year. Everybody knows it. Everybody admits it. Wisnitzer would admit, would admit it. It was basically his freshman year last year, so he was still finding his way. Worked very hard in the offseason to build up his body and will be counted on to give some quality minutes on that front line. Well, yeah, they got about 13.2 minutes last year. They're going to count on him for quite a few more, I would think here in this 2023-24 campaign. Ohio has scored the game's last seven points. Sharif Mitchell, a very strong lockdown defender on the perimeter, an on-ball defender. They really like that young man. Transfer from Creighton, part of that Blue Jays team, which went to the Elite Eight last year. A.J. Brown, free throw line jumper, bangs it home. A.J. Brown, and Ohio has scored nine straight. Well, you mentioned Sharif Mitchell, Marty, and that's exactly what he can do. He, he's a great on-ball defender, has really gotten himself from a basketball IQ to understand what it takes here, especially in this Bobcat program. Foul out high on Miles Brown. Troy will change. Tayton Connerway, a 6'3", 186-pound junior from Burleson, Texas, who was last year's Junior College Player of the Year, first-team JUCO last year. Connorway had a big game in the win over Lauderdale on Monday afternoon for the Trojans. Connorway coming off the bench with in just 15 minutes of court time had 15 points. Trojans get a basket. And Ohio with the basketball. Bobcat lead stands at five. Amir Mohammed. 10 points a game last season, getting the strong start out high for this Troy team. Connorway right off the bench with the basket. We talked about the performance he had on Monday. And Coach Scott Cross, obviously very, very high in that young man. No question about that, Marty. In that possession there, we saw Jalen Hunter make that strong move. I think the one thing Jalen Hunter has worked on in the offseason, just the ability to handle contact, especially when he gets in the paint with a lot of bodies around him. I think he's gotten a little stronger. 
And obviously, it's an excellent shooter and penetrator. Aiden Hathaway's first look in the 23-24 season off the mark. It's Conorway in the rebound. Hathaway, the sophomore from Lafayette, Georgia, another guy who really bulked up and beefed up his game in the offseason. Just nips with the rebound, and Ohio pushes back. Mitchell pulls up. And the rebound pulled down inside by Jackson Fields, a 6'8", 210-pound sophomore. Quickly come the Trojans. Ohio's lead stands at five. Nice slice to the glass. Nice look inside. Ball stripped out of Fields' hands on the way up. And good defense inside by Ohio. That was a good job of penetrating by Eugene in the dish, but good recovery defense by Ohio. Yeah, good hands, good strong hands, and the ability to come up with the loose ball. And we talked about kind of that style of play. Both of these teams are going to try to get kind of held a skelter at times, but I think for Jeff Bowles, he would love just to see his team defensively to come up with a lot more turnovers and a lot more opportunities to score in transition. Thomas Dow, a 6'8 freshman from Dothan, Georgia, into the lineup for Troy, and also entering is Marcus Rigsby, Jr., 6'3", 203-pound sophomore. He and Miles Rigsby are brothers. Sam Hyman will tell you about their very interesting story a little bit later on in our broadcast tonight. Miles Brown with a nice up and under the reverse. The flip, they won't stay down. Liz Nitzer can't control the miss, and Troy will push back. Connor Wayne with the basketball. Nice look into the field, but stepping right in front of it was Elmore James. Here come the Bobcats. James on the slash and dash and finishes. Well, that's where he's good. Once he gets in the open space area in the lane, the man from Cleveland, Ohio, to Billy to finish at the basket. Sharif Mitchell in the backcourt, guilty of a personal foul as he was hounding Connor away up the floor. We, we talked a lot about Sharif Mitchell and his days at Creighton and the defensive abilities he brings, Dave, on the perimeter for Ohio. Uh, another strength of this team, which has a lot of those type of guys in the backcourt. Yeah, you know, he spent four years in a very good program there at Creighton. And, and obviously, defensively, that is where he has an elite level. And that's what you have to do, especially when you come into a culture like this. Eugene on the baseline, a good, strong take and a strong finish by Spud Eugene, one of the two returning starters for the Troy Trojans. And they've got Ohio's lead down to five. Troy last year, 73 points per game, sixth best in the Sun Belt. Hadaway spots and misses, and Eugene the rebound. They gave up 66 a game, but again, very different team with 11 newcomers this year, just five returnees. Ball strip free in the lane, and here come the Bobcats. Mitchell behind the back, runs into the lane, and has the ball knocked out of his hands. And Thomas Dow comes away with the loose ball. Into the hands of Miles Brown, who had to go in and out. And it's Troy's turn with the basketball as Connorway controls. Jumper off the mark by Rigsby Jr. Inside the finish and the flush underneath by Jackson Fields. Well, we talked about the interior for Ohio. Size-wise is where it's going to be so important to block out, keep your body in front of those offensive players. That's going to be really important. Jackson Fields last year averaged three points and a couple of rebounds a game. Here's a good look to Hathaway who reverses and scores. Nicely done out high on the feed from Sharif Mitchell. Nice speed and great finish there at the basket. Hadaway, a sophomore. Double figures just a couple of times last year in limited minutes. Troy the other way, and the jumper off the mark. And the rebound by Miles Brown. Brown on the step through. The shot rejected by Dow, but Brown comes away with the loose ball. Out high to Mitchell. Oh, it gets clobbered as he penetrated. Connerway came gliding in and clipped Mitchell as he went airborne, and that will take us to the under-12 timeout. 11-10 to go in the first half. Jeff Bowles fired up at game number one. Who is, of course, a former number two overall pick in the 2021 NBA draft. So two guys that can flat-out lock down defensively. Boy, and as a coach, you got to love what guys are arguing about defense, right? Sure, because <laughs> usually they're arguing about who's going to shoot next. <laughs> Now we're talking about who's going to get pressure on the basketball. you got to love that. First free throw by Mitchell is good. Ike Cornish into the game for the first time for Ohio. 6'6", 190-pound redshirt sophomore transfer via the University of Maryland. Mitchell makes both free throws, and Ohio with a seven-point lead over Troy out of the Sun Belt. The Trojans, the preseason number eight choice in the Sun Belt, despite the fact being the only team to win 20 or more games each of the last two seasons. 
in 10 or more conference games each of the last two seasons. But of course, a lot being taken into consideration. They basically turned the roster completely over. Well, when you think about the Sun Belt Conference, I mean, you're always going to have a couple teams that's just mid major level that are really going to perform well. Obviously, on Monday night, Michigan State found out from James, Matt, James Madison what that particular felt like in terms of that Sun Belt Conference and what they did. Miles Brown, the foul for Ohio, and Troy with the basketball. Jumper on the way, it could by Connorway. Three-point basket, James Connorway. A little pressure here from the Trojans. Check it out, that was on Sharif Mitchell a moment ago, not Miles Brown. And the lead at four for Ohio. Troy last year, 32% from behind the three-point line. They were ninth in the Sunbelt Conference. And on the wing, Connor Way guilty of the personal foul. For Troy, that is the fifth team foul. Ohio has three. Connorway will have to take a seat on the bench of Scott Cross. As coming back into the lineup is Miles Rigsby, 6'6 freshman, Fort Worth, Texas. Lone Star State, very kind to Scott Cross yes, as sir. far as you their know that. roster because of his days at Texas Arlington. Straight away, Clayton three is off the mark. And the rebound into the hands of Jackson Fields. Halfway through the first 20 in the season opener, Ohio with a four point lead. Over the Troy Trojan, Bobcats 31% from the field, Troy 35%. Fields finds Dow spinning inside, nice use of the left, but can't get the shot to stay down. And A.J. Brown the rebound for Ohio. Good offensive step there for the Trojans, couldn't get that one to go. Again, Ohio's going to try to use their penetration, try to get it strong with the basket. And A.J. Brown draws contact as he breaks down the lane. Jackson Fields coming over defensively. Will be guilty of the Troy personal foul. And a good look at A.J. Brown. You watch him come right at you, Dave. Yep, right at you, right at us. And then, of course, being strong enough to get the finish. You know, we talked to Jeff Foles prior to the game. Marty and I did. And uh, we, we talked about how much information have you given your players? How much, how many sets have you installed? He said, well, we got just enough to make sure we can play a basketball game. But we'll continue to put new things in as, as the season progresses. And that's always the case here early in the season. Out of bounds play, special situations. You got to be a little careful. If you got a veteran team, maybe you can give it to them a little faster. If you're young, you got to make sure everybody's understanding what page we're on. One of the advantages of having so many returnees from last year's team. Yep, you can move a little faster. They know exactly what's coming in practices. Practices are a lot smoother, that's for sure. One of two with the line. Ohio's lead stands at five. Down out high. Rigsby Jr. with the basketball to Miles Rigsby. Skip to Dowd, who's open on the wing for a three. And the rebound yanked out of there by Muhammad. One power dribble, and the finish won't stay. And inside, Dowd comes away with that offensive rebound. He'll lean in, and the shot doesn't go, but Thomas Dowd will head to the free throw line. A foul inside on Ohio. A.J. Brown, the foul. His first, and for the Bobcats, that is team five. Thomas Dowd, an interesting story. He played on the same AAU team as Scott Cross's son. So it was a pretty easy recruiting job, really. Well, I'm going to throw another one at you with Dowd as well. Now, I know you know I don't do all my homework correctly. <laughs> you get on me. But this young man is a, one of nine siblings in his family. So how about wow. that? You don't see that very often. No, you how about, sure don't. When you think about that, they're fighting for food at the table. You're just you're lucky <laughs> if you can get some scraps. 17.6 rebounds a game. He was the... Alabama High School Athletic Association South region, most valuable player. And the free throws bring Troy to within three. And Dowd almost on cue with the steal. Ball knocked out of bounds, and Ohio will again inbound to the Troy side of the floor. Well, these little special situations we referenced a little bit, Marty. I mean, how many times have you handled this? You got a little bit of the exhibition game, but handling full court pressure you got to get into game-like situations to really continue to improve in that area. Uh, I never once said you didn't do your homework. You, you just spend your whole I game know, looking I at my sheet. I know how this goes. <laughs> I know how this goes. But. Elmore James with the penetration turned away. A.J. Brown shot clocks at two. Out high now, Hunter the runner as the horn sounds, and it's a shot clock violation. 
and Troy will get the basketball. Jalen Hunter trying to coax a foul out of this as he talks to Courtney Green, mid-court stripe. Hunter last year, 13 points, three rebounds a game, 20 or more points in a game four times, had 27 against Toledo in the MAC semifinals. Very steady young man, very calming influence on this basketball team. And one of those guys, and I mean everybody, everybody likes Jalen Hunter. Yeah, you just, there's no way you don't. He's just a, a terrific young man, communicates well, not only with his teammates, with his staff. Muhammad, the off-balance runner, Clayton, the rebound. Both teams struggling a little bit early on offensively. A combined 10 for 36. Good job by Muhammad out high, knocking away the Hunter jump shot. But Hunter hustles and recovers the loose ball, and Ohio will reset. Jalen weaves his way into the lane to the open A.J. Brown. Ohio's third made three of the first half, pushes the lead to a half dozen. Yeah, great penetration, the ability to find the open man in the corner, catch and shoot. Bobcats last year, second in the MAC at 37% from behind the arc. Nice move into the lane now by Eugene, the turnaround jumper. Spud Eugene, career highs last year in field goal percentage, three point percentage, free throw percentage. By the way, Dave, his X handle, which used to be Twitter, his X handle is Splash Town. Wow. Uh huh. 30. Now, a couple little things for all your basketball nerds like Marty and I are. The numbers on your jersey, you see Jalen 112. Now you can wear any number 0 to 99 in college basketball, which I think is really a, a different type of move. And the other thing is technology on the bench. They're allowing coaches now to have live video or live replay. So if they want to see you on the bench, Marty, with an they iPad, can probably, with an iPad yep. they can do that. So a couple little things there for this basketball season. First free throw by Jalen Hunter is good. The one I thought interesting, Dave, the reset in the front court to 20 seconds, the back court to 30 seconds. Yeah, and again, you know, that, I'm sure they sit around all summer and try to figure this out. And I know <laughs> Jeff Bowles and I have talked a little bit about some of the changes. I think one of the other changes that we'll see, the officials now on a timeout, after a foul call, instead of going away from the bench, they will go to the scorer's table side, which allows the coach maybe to ask a more friendly question than screaming at him across the way. Six-point Ohio lead, seven and a half to go in half number one. The Mid-American Conference and the Sun Belt Conference with this challenge series. And I think it's something as Troy turns the basketball over. Number one, it helps both conferences a chance to get a quality win, but it also helps in scheduling also. No question. And Sometime in January, they determine Ohio will go on the road just like all the men's basketball programs will sometime in February. But, you know, as I talked to one of the administrators from Troy, uh, there's no easy way to get any to any of those schools. Uh, so travel is going to be a big part. and It's going to be on a, a Tuesday night, February 10th, will be the kind of the second round of that challenge. Good start for A.J. Brown. He's in double figures after splashing the jumper. 11 points for the Bobcats. Sophomore guard from Orlando, Florida. Miles Rigsby is open and scores. Yeah, good shooter. You know, he's been known for his rebounding, but the young man can really get his feet set and knock down threes from the perimeter. Rigsby, 23 minutes on Monday against Fort Lauderdale, had 11 points. And comes away with the rebound of the missed shot and pushes the break back up the floor for the Trojans. Five-point Ohio lead, six and a half to go in the first 20 here at the Convocation Center. Ohio's football team with a big win last night at Buffalo. Theo Sang with the jump shot and knocks it down as he hits the three to bring Troy to within a basket. And prior to the last time out when Sam Hyman was telling us about Sharif Mitchell, behind him on the floor, the Mid-American Conference champion Ohio women's soccer team was introduced to the crowd. James powers to the basket. And it's knocked off balance. And we'll head to the free throw line. 17 fouls on Troy. That will get Thomas Dowd off the bench for the Troy Trojans as Jackson Fields will sit down. Thomas Dowd back in for Jackson Fields. Ohio will not have the services tonight of I.J. Azuma, the 6'8", 240-pound junior. And Jeff Bowles really doesn't have a timeline as to when Azuma will be ready to go. And 6'7", 208-pound freshman Ben Nickel will redshirt this season for Ohio. 
out of George Washington High School in the Charleston, West Virginia area. There you see the Bobcat bench and Azuma and Nickel seated right next to each other on the right side of your picture. Second Always a hard throw. decision yes. to make the red shirt call, but uh, sometimes it's better you make it early and then you can get your mindset, understand what you got to do in terms of practice skills and all that. Uh, having a chance to see him in practice, uh, a very talented, I'm talking about Ben Nickel, very, very talented player. Just needs a year to mature and get a little stronger. Out high. Hunter got his feet tangled up with Spud Eugene, and he picks up the personal foul. The free throws a moment ago, Ohio 8 of 10 from the line so far, while Troy is 2 for 2 at the line. There you see the Trojans. And as much as they are on the road early in the season, it's been a rough go for them getting ready for this season. The apartments on campus weren't ready, so they had to spend the majority of their preseason in hotels in the Troy Dothan, Alabama area. In fact, they spent a lot of time eating at Waffle House. Head coach Scott Cross as the shot clock violation comes in. On cue, the Bobcats smothering get it, the uh, Troy Trojans. But uh, we were laughing about that when I was talking to Coach Cross a little bit earlier. He goes, hey, if you can't eat at Waffle House, you can't play for me. That's what he said. <laughs> I, I heard it. And that was, uh, and you think about this week, obviously they started the season Monday at at noon in terms of their first game they go over here they travel here to athens they're going to stay the night here in athens they have an eight o'clock flight out of columbus ohio and they're going to play at oregon state on friday night so uh they're going to get those miles in real quick miles brown loses his balance able to recover the basketball and ohio will reset with the shot clock at 11. brown up and under on dowd clayton with six back to brown with five on the perimeter Kicks to the corner, chains with two for a three off the mark, and the shot will not have counted anyway, a shot clock violation against Ohio. First look of the night at A.J. Sheldon for Ohio, the six-foot, 185-pound sophomore out of Kaufman High School in the greater Columbus area in Dublin. Sheldon last year averaged a point a game. Played 29 games, did have one start, but his minutes kind of dwindled as the season went along for Ohio, but has made himself into a much better player in the offseason, and the Bobcats are counting on him. Dowd in the corner for a three that won't stay down, and James the rebound. That had to be hard on the Troy team, switching from hotel to hotel to hotel every few weeks. Well, I think in your interview with Coach Cross, he had mentioned that when the football team was at home, they always had to, they wanted to stay, you know, with their visiting team had to stay in a nicer hotel, so they had to move out of that one to a to a Motel 6, and then <laughs> once that team left, they went back to the same hotel, so a uh, little chaotic, I would think. Absolutely, this getting the apartments ready for the players to move into, and on campus at Troy, everything now is set for them, so nice place to call home instead of bouncing back and forth. Gabe Wisnitzer back into the Ohio lineup. Elmore James, free throw is good. Back to the line is James. Last year, member of the All-Mac freshman team, averaged eight points a game. Ohio first team his senior year at Brush High School in the Cleveland area. Into the lane, Eugene loses his balance, loses the ball. Wisnitzer picks up the basketball and back pushes Ohio. Lead stands at a half dozen. Good ball movement to the open chain for the three. Got it. Yeah, very unselfish there. The ability to push the ball. Got the numbers factor as well. Good passing. Good catch and shoot. Ohio's lead at nine here in the first half. That's the largest the Bobcats have led by in this first 20. Ohio right now in the midst of a 7-0 run in the last two minutes. A.J. Sheldon picks up the foul. And the under four timeout with Ohio expanding its lead to nine. The Bobcats picking it up on both of them. We talked about a little bit the post guy on the inside. As good as Wisnitzer can, can do sometimes, you really don't have that Dwight Wilson type of field player on the inside. 
Detroit inbound the basketball. And there's that Bobcat run, 7 0 in the last 2.22. Eugene Airport off balance, and A.J. Sheldon picks up the personal foul. A.J. Sheldon picking up that foul, that's his first. Sixth team foul. foul against the Bobcats. We are always pleased to bring you our coverage of Ohio basketball. Today we have a friend of ours watching out in Omaha, Nebraska, Michael Stevens, former oh. member of the Ohio Athletic Department. He and his son Trevor. Awesome. Michael has moved on to join the world of professional volleyball. Out high, straight on Dow three is off the back iron. And wow, down to the floor hard when Jackson Fields. And A.J. Sheldon can't believe they called the foul on him. Courtney Green came racing in. And that's two fouls on A.J. Sheldon. And that'll get Jalen Hunter back off of Jeff Bowles bench. Jalen Hunter back in. Placing Sheldon. So Ohio with the lead standing at nine. You can see Sheldon still a little yeah. miffed as he got called for the foul. He says, I wasn't even close to it. <laughs> Jackson Fields will step to the line. Fields, last year, three points, couple of rebounds a game. His start on Monday against Fort Lauderdale was his first career start. He received multiple offers from Division I schools to play football as a wide receiver. And unable to get that free throw to drop. And Miles Brown collects the miss for Ohio. And away from the ball, Jalen Hunter. Knocked down and a foul on Troy. Number two, Marcus Rigsby Jr. Marcus Rigsby Jr. His first personal foul. That's a tenth. These next three minutes and some change here. I think Jeff Bowles is going to watch closely in terms of their offensive sets, what they're going to try to produce on the floor. And this, these are the little things that I'm sure people think about. But when you don't have a Dwight Wilson on the inside, how are you going to manufacture points when you're not shooting the ball well? Going to dribble penetrate? Are you going to do some different type of ball screens? So those are the little things that I'm sure Jeff Bowles has probably worked on a lot in practice here in the last 10 or 12 days. But now you got to find out if you can do it in game conditions. Just a moment ago, you saw at the top of the score bar that stat number points off turnovers. Ohio with a nine nothing advantage, and when that score popped up, the lead was nine for right. Ohio. change for the Trojans as entering for the first time is Victor Valdez, a 6'7", 258-pound freshman from Monterey, Mexico. Inside field, draws a double team as the Bobcat lead is moving into double digits. Miles Brown comes out of the pack with the loose ball, and the Bobcats race back. James, off-balance floater, and rebound yanked out of the air by Spud Eugene. Middle fields finds Muhammad out high for the high arching three. That's off the mark, and Wisnitzer tracks down the miss for Ohio. You know, give the Bobcats defense a little bit of credit here. And Muhammad, Muhammad has yet to score here this evening. He's 0 for 6 from the field. Has played close to 14 minutes, but we talked about him in the open. He can score in a variety of ways, but right now the Bobcats have done a wonderful job kind of keeping him locked down. There's Scott Cross. I asked him prior to the game. I said, Coach, trip here smooth? He said, yeah. He goes, all I know is we get on a bus and drove for an hour. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, <laughs> his mind obviously more focused yeah. on, on uh, getting ready to play the game. But, yeah, I, I know we get on the bus. I knew it took us an hour to get here. Said, Other than that, uh, everything's fine. <laughs> Got into the Athens area last night. Dave talked about it a moment ago. Noon on Monday. Game here tonight, and then all the way across the country to Corvallis, Oregon, tomorrow to play Oregon State on Friday night. And then they'll be back in Ohio in less than a month on December the 9th. They'll play over at Dayton. Lead at 13 for Ohio. Eugene, nice leave in the lane for Fields, who lost the ball, and A.J. Clayton down to the floor to force a held ball. And the possession arrow will give the ball back to the Bobcats. Look at that Troy bench. Sun Belt Conference, a league that certainly made a name for itself on Monday night when James Madison went to East Lansing and knocked off Michigan State. 
And I think one of the things that that win does, Dave, uh, I think it's showing everybody just what the transfer for portal can do. We can make you competitive overnight. Here come the Bobcats. Elmore James, the off balance slow, yeah. goes high glass and finishes. Yeah, the transfer portal has changed college basketball landscape completely in terms of teams, the ability with veteran players to go into a tough environment like the Breslin Center on Monday night and not be scared of anything. You know, we've, we've played a lot of games, so big dividends on that transfer portal. Ohio has expanded the lead to 15. Turnover leads to a run out. The lead for Clayton, who leads in. Count it, and a foul. A.J. Clayton on the nice dish in the lane. And Ohio starting to gather some room from Troy. The lead expands to 17. And a great look from Elmore James. Came up with the loose ball right there. The ability to find him, a little push pass right to the paint area. And Clayton will step to the line, the 6'8 junior. That was his first bucket a moment ago. Knocks down the free throw. 12 minutes, three points, three rebounds for A.J. Clayton. And suddenly it's an 18-point Ohio lead. The Bobcats in the midst of a 16-3 run. In fact, stretch it to 16-0. Another turnover and another run out. A.J. Brown able to get the shot to rattle around and drop in. And Scott Cross has to call a timeout as Ohio has suddenly busted this game clean wide open. It's expanded the lead to 20 with 124 to go in the half. Yeah. There's in double figures. A.J. Brown with 13. Elmore James with 11. And Ohio leads 41 to 21. The Bobcats in the midst of an 18-0 run. We approach a minute to go in the half. Valtez, Eugene, Dow free for the three. Unable to knock that one down. Pulls down his own miss. Finds Muhammad on the wing. The ball knocked away. Almost another run out. Good hustle by Eugene to come away with the basketball. He finds an open Valdez. Tries to spin. Ball's loose. Still being scrapped for. Eugene in the pack. Finds Dowd with three on the shot clock. And he knocks down the three-point shot. Three-point basket. Thomas Dowd. And for Troy, that three by Thomas Dowd. Their third make of the night in a dozen attempts. And it stop the bleeding momentarily. They'd been outscored 18 to nothing in the game's last five minutes. Hunter trying to shake free of Valdez. The jump pass to James. Bobcats work the perimeter. The reversal to Miles Brown. Shot clock at eight. Brown, oh, nice slice mm. to the glass and finishes. Wonderfully done by the fifth-year senior, Miles Brown. That's a nice change of acceleration there. Speaking of acceleration, here comes Spud Eugene counted at a foul. As he penetrated into the lane in a heartbeat and got the floater to fall and we'll head to the line. Jeff Foles very animated on the sideline there. Again, talking about that rule change, I think he's going to ask the official, you know, we talked about the rule change, are we going to enforce it? And that's something I'm sure the officials have talked about during the course of the preseason is that type of call and the consistency of making it. Free throws to come after some housekeeping work done underneath the bucket. Good crowd in the convo here tonight. Ten seconds to go in the half. We showed it to you in our open tonight. Just a beautiful day in this part of Ohio, southeast Ohio. Sunshine, temperature in the 70s. Jeff Bowles, Kyle Barlow. Coach Bowles in his fifth year. Win tonight would be his 79th at his alma mater. You know, he's developed such a, a nice culture with this basketball program. And that, we use that term a lot, Marty, in terms of culture, but, you know, it's it's just not lip talk with Coach Bowles. I mean, he, he sells it on recruiting-wise, and then once they get there, you know, they get it in terms of what they want to try to be and represent this university. Miles Brown slips and falls in the lane. And with eight seconds left in the half, Ohio with the basketball. He's still able to get the ball in bounds. Oh, my goodness, how high A.J. Clayton. Oh. Uh, an offensive foul is the call as he leveled Amir Muhammad with a pick out high. Both look like they're okay. Muhammad on his rear end for a moment, then popped back up. Three seconds left in the half. 
Tate and Conroy will come back in as Jackson Fields. That, that particular call, excuse me, Marty, is another point of emphasis for the officials on that kind of that screen right there where you turn into them and just blast them again, trying to stay away. Less collisions, collisions in the game will probably equate to less injuries as well. Five tenths of a second left, and Tate Conroy draws a foul. Ohio at the nine foul team limit. Foul the second on A.J. Brown. And to the line goes Tayton Connorway, 6'3 junior, Burleson, Texas, went to Ranger Junior College. Averaged 15 points a game last year. First team Junior College All-America. Two attempts. Troy tonight at the free throw line, three of four, make it four of five as Conorway knocks down the front end. And Gabe Wisnitzer back into the Ohio lineup with five tenths of the second left. Mark James the rebound and that will do it for half number one. Ohio pushed the lead to as many as 20 in that first half. Bobcats at one juncture led 41-21. Went on an the preseason number eight choice in the Sun Belt Conference. Ohio the number three choice in what figures to be a very interesting Mid-American Conference race. Akron the preseason favorite. Kent State the number two choice. Then Ohio and then Toledo at number four in the preseason rankings in the Mid-American Conference. As second half action starts, our Sam Hyman had a chance to get the words of wisdom of both head coaches here as we start half number two, Sam. Yeah, Marty spoke to Jeff Bowles first, and he emphasized his biggest takeaway. The energy was really good on defense. Defense created offense, got a lot of 50-50 balls. His message to the guys in the locker room, 0-0 zero, zero game, 20 minutes, let's go. As far as Scott Cross goes, he told me his biggest takeaway and message, one possession at a time. we got to run some actions for Amir Muhammad. He said we are a completely different team when Amir Muhammad is at his best, so be on the lookout for some actions for him. After the Miles Rigsby basket, A.J. Brown starts the second half with an Ohio three. And for Brown, his third three of the night, game high 16, and that's the Bobcat advantage. Great to have you with us tonight here at the Convocation Center. Marty Bannister, Coach Dave Sicuti. you just heard from Sam Hyman a moment ago. And a foul called on Troy's Miles Rigsby. We are at the Convocation Center in Athens for the season opener for the Bobcats. Coming off a 19-win year last year, 19 and 14. Jeff Bowles' team going 10 and 8, making it to the MAC semifinals. Ohio will get a chance to play in Cleveland before the year is out. Part of a unique triple header that takes place on December the 30th. The Bobcats will play Davidson that day. Akron also involved in one of the games, as is Ohio State. Hunters three is a board ball. And back run the Trojans with the basketball. The step through, the floater, the finish by Amir Mohammed. And just as Sam Hyman was talking about, as head coach Scott Cross said, right. we have to get him going. Well, that's his first score of the evening right there. And as uh, we heard, I mean, those are the kind of things you got to try to get him involved a little bit. If you're going to have a chance to kind of cut into this lead, this young man at the free throw line right here that you're looking at is going to have to get himself involved from a scoring standpoint. 13 Sun Belt Conference preseason choice, Amir Mohammed. Free throw rattles around and rolls in. He's a transfer from the Lubbock Christian and hails from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Against pressure, Ohio works the ball off the floor. Jalen Hunter. Out high to Miles Brown. With Ohio's strength in the backcourt, Dave, it's going to be very hard to press this team, is it not? I would think so. I think most teams, once they get a feel for what Ohio's structure is offensively, you know, they're just going to probably just decide, you know, let's just get them in a half-court setting. Let's not open up the court 
and let them kind of run around a little bit because the speed and the quickness they have on the perimeter, I think the Bobcats really are a good threat. How about that? Oh, right way there, into though. the air, yeah. The one-handed catch and flush by A.J. Clayton on a pretty inbounds play. And Ohio's lead goes to 15 points two minutes into the second half. Uh, the delivery from Jalen Hunter, exceptionally well done on that play. Well, we talked about the little things, special situations. What do you have installed? And what do you continue working? Obviously, they've been working on that particular out-of-bounds play. Eugene floats into the lane and scores. And back run the Bobcats as the leads at 13 points. Brown flips off the glass. No, and the rebound yanked down by Theo Sang, hustling back to pull down the miss. Eugene again leans in, this time draws contact. And if that's A.J. Brown, that's the third foul mm -hmm. on the game's high score. That is indeed the case. The second team on Ohio here in half number two. Two and a half minutes in to the second 20 minutes of play here in Athens. Well, it's been a flurry of activity here in this first few minutes here. I think the one thing you'll see from Ohio a little bit more is try to push the ball after their opponent score. In other words, it's always good to get a rebound or turnover and get in transition, but I think you'll see all of Michigan State, once they get the ball in the basket, I think you're going to see Ohio try to push it up very, very quickly after made scores. Sharif Mitchell back into the lineup as A.J. Brown sits down again. Three fouls. Brown goes to the bench with 16 points. Good look at the 6'3 senior, Spud Eugene. Spring, Texas via East Florida State. First team all preseason in the Sun Belt Conference. That league, one of the many that went through a realignment the last couple of years, bringing in James Madison, our friends down at Huntington from Marshall. Into the lane goes James and went high class for the finish that time. Nicely done, three minutes in. We were talking earlier about how it's not easy to get to a lot of the schools in the Sun Belt Conference. It's a rather lengthy trip. Of course, Huntington not too far from Athens as the shot clock goes under 10. Leaning in is Rigsby, and James comes away with a miss. Georgia State, perhaps the easiest, located in Atlanta. Right, right, and uh, obviously Ohio is going to play Marshall here in a regular season non-conference game, so that might have been one of the logical ones to have in February, but that won't happen. Gliding in and a blocking foul is called on Miles Brown as Troy tries to battle back into this game. The lead stands at 13 points. Well, you'll see the action here. Again, that's that block charge call. It's so difficult to call because it's a bang-bang play for the officials just to pick that up, so Going to have to replace that shoe right there. Amir Mohammed will step to the line. Last year, a 75% shooter at the stripe. Knocked down 62 threes last season. Troy last year, again, 120 games. They lost three starters off of that. Well, here's the call again. There's that one foot. You can see he's moving a little bit. His feet weren't set, the defender, so they're going to make that call every time. But uh, this is a good opportunity here for Muhammad to kind of settle in with a couple of free throws here. And as we heard from Coach Scott Cross through Sam, you know, they're going to have to kind of settle in a little bit with him and see if they can get some offensive action from him. Second free throw won't stay down, and Gabe Wisnitzer, who checked in at the dead ball, comes away with the rebound for Ohio. Zay Williams averaged 13 points and seven rebounds a game for the Trojans last year. Nelson Phillips averaged 11 points and five rebounds a game. And Kiefer Punter averaged eight points and three rebounds. Those were the three losses in the starting lineup for Scott Cross's team. Inside was Nitzer. Good return feed for Hunter's three. And it hit the shot clock, and that will take us to an official's timeout. 15.52 to go here at the Convocation Center in Athens. The number eight team in the preseason in the Sun Belt, the Troy Trojans. 
trail them. Tate and Conorway, who had a tremendous career in junior college, they may not have gotten him without the transfer portal. You know, and I think one thing Scott Cross did in this off past off season is he hired a couple new coaches. Uh, obviously, they had some connections on the recruiting trails, and anytime you have that, you know, you got an opportunity to get some players from different parts of the country. And as you mentioned, the Texas connection seems to be really the kind of the foothold and the footprint for this program right now. Scott Cross, a graduate of Texas Arlington, 1998. Good look by Muhammad inside for Fields and was shoved from behind as he made that catch under the basket. Fouls on Ohio's Aiden Hathaway, the 6'8 sophomore from Lafayette, Georgia. George is kind of hanging around in yeah, this game just, right now, I was just Dave. thinking that, Morty, and I think we heard what Sam said in terms of his conversation with Coach Cross. One possession at a time. Just hang in there, guys, because good things can happen. Fields open on the inbound and splashes home the three. And just like that, the lead's under double digits at nine. Hunter trying to weave his way through traffic. Recovers the loose ball. Stripped out of his hands. Good defense by Connorway. And here come the Trojans with numbers. Good hustle by Sharif Mitchell getting back defensively and forcing the turnover. And off Hunter, straight on jumper. Inside, ball knocked free, saved back into play. And Troy with the basketball. Good hustle underneath by Tate and Connorway. Slashes inside, leans in on Wisnitzer and scores. And just like that, Troy's to within seven. And they're keeping that full court pressure up, trying to keep the pressure on the guards for Ohio. Connorway with a half dozen. Mitchell, Hadaway, baseline James glides in and a big basket there for Ohio. Great job of utilizing the baseline by Elmore James. Yeah, good response by James there coming up with a basket, which the Bobcats dearly needed. Sam Hyman telling us that Miles Brown on the stationary bike on the Bobcat bench trying to loosen up a little bit. Missed shot and a foul on Troy on the tangle for the miss, Jackson Fields. Picks up the personal foul. Number 15, Jackson Field. And Miles Brown jogs towards the scorer's table. He'll come back into the game. Bobcats right now with Miles Brown, Sharif Mitchell, Ike Cornish is back into the game, Elmore James, and Gabe Wisnitzer. Against pressure, Bobcats will work up the floor. Two newcomers. Mitchell and Cornish. Wisnitzer recovers the loose ball. Takes the return feed from Miles Brown. And Ohio will set up offensively. Out high Cornish. Here's Mitchell with a nice step through. Leans in and somehow got that shot to go in. Wow. <laughs> How did that fall? I don't know. I think that basket probably should be awarded to somebody else. <laughs> hey, but he's going to get credit for it. No one's going to turn it down. That's right. And the lead goes to 11. Yeah, two quick responses there for the Bobcats. Three off the mark by Marcus Riggs being on the battle for the loose ball. We have a whistle and a foul. Third foul for Sharif Mitchell. Sharif Mitchell picks up his third foul, the fifth on Ohio. We were with Jeff Bowles prior to the game tonight, and Jeff telling us how excited he is for college basketball. Season open on Monday. He said he was on his couch watching games. Just <laughs> Spending the day. Good closeout by Elmore James. And Muhammad will reset as the shot clock's down to eight. Dowd trying to leave Cornish. Free throw line feed for the jumper. That's up and good by Marcus Rigsby Jr. He's got seven points. And again, the lead at nine as we are seven minutes into the second 20 minutes of play here in Athens. Mitchell with a nice crossover, just weaves his way down the lane. The floater won't find its way down, but he'll be at the free throw line. Well, you mentioned the number of games, Marty. College basketball is underway, and you can find them every which direction if you're at home watching on TV or streaming them live. But uh, 
you know, the one thing about the college basketball season, once it gets started, it comes fast and furious. Players love it because practice time is kind of limited a little bit. But more importantly, now you've got to be ready. You've got to have preparation. Your skill set preparation-wise, something I know Jeff Bowles has talked about with all of his players, they've got to be able to absorb the information and then transfer it to the court when the games come. Mitchell, free throw, rattles in, the lead to 11. A.J. Brown back into the game for Ohio. Brings with him three personal fouls and 16 points. Up before Muhammad slashes to the glass and scores. And draws contact and a foul. Amir Mohammed having a big second half. Yeah, he got started early, and he's going to continue that. Again, struggled in the first half scoring-wise, but he kind of kept his poise and, and stayed really solid offensively and defensively, and now it's paying some dividends for him. Half dozen points. There's the finish right there. Again, you're talking about a young man that's built well. Strong-looking body, the ability to finish and, and accept the contact as well. Foul was on Gabe Wisnitzer. And the free throw by Muhammad is good. And the lead at eight. Spud Eugene back into the game. Had that nickname when he was a young child. 12 points a game last season. And Cornish will have to burn an Ohio timeout with 12.48. First called timeout of the second half. Rolled into a full stop in the second half's festivities. And on the other side, I spoke to Jalen about the camp, and he told me that he loves Damian Lillard, one of his favorite players. He actually ended up getting a tattoo on the back of his right leg that displays Dame's camp logo and the pillars of the camp, the three pillars, hard work, accountability, and character. Ohio with the basketball out of the timeout against pressure. Good look ahead for Cornish. And here's Mitchell. Bobcats lead, stands at 8, 56-48. You, you love to see those NBA stars kind of giving back a little bit, Absolutely. helping out some of these up-and-comers. Yeah. Mitchell with a nice slash to the glass in the finish. Well, good job of handling the pressure. And again, a little acceleration to the basket. Good spacing there for the Bobcats. Critical span of minutes here just to kind of see what your performance is going to be. Mohammed from distance off the mark, and Wisnitzer had the ball momentarily, recovered inside, and the shot blocked from behind by Wisnitzer, ran Darius Jones trying to finish inside, and Wisnitzer swatted the shot out of the way. A.J. Clayton will come back in for Ohio. Good action on the inside. You know, we had, when we were talking to Coach Jeff Bowles prior to the game, Muhammad going in there strong. We talked about a little bit about, you know, rotation-wise, and I don't think Jeff Bowles has really settled in much at all. There's a lot of experimentation going on here on this floor in game one. Also for Ohio, so of the 58-31 from the Bobcat backcourt. Well, we talked about perimeter play, Marty, and that's going to be kind of the forte here as this season unfolds for the year. But uh, they'll find different ways to get scoring from different folks. Off-balance runner by Eugene off the mark. Inside, Randarius Jones came away with the rebound. Bodies tumble to the floor, and we have a whistle and a foul. John Randarius Jones of Troy. Fourth team foul on the Trojans here in this second half. Jones will sit down. Jackson Fields is back into the game. In the Bobcat lead, stands at 10. Ohio is led by as many as 20. Sharif Mitchell tells everyone else to go down the floor. And I'll do the dirty work and bring the ball up the floor. Mitchell from yeah. Omaha and attended Creighton. The Nebraska Player of the Year as a senior. Real good spacing there for the Bobcats in their half-court offense. Again, you'll see it all the time in terms of trying to keep everything spaced out. Cornish unable to get the jumper to roll, and they rebound into the hands of Troy. Bobcats here in the second half have scored just 15 points. They put 43 on the board 
in the first 20 minutes of play. Here's a nice look inside for the rolling fields and the finish. Yeah, nice little pass there on the perimeter for Marcus Rigsby. Almost the reverse of the Ohio football game last night where the Bobcats struggled in the first <laughs> half to score and came out and put 20 on the board in the second half. Uh, won that big game up in Buffalo last night. James inside. That might be personal foul number four, and it is. No, they're going to count no, the basket. Count the okay. Basket. Wow, I thought for sure they were going to whistle A.J. Brown for his fourth. Yeah. There was a lot of contact under the basket. Uh, he buried his shoulder right into his chest, yeah. but uh, Courtney Green there making the call there. Just, uh, again, we're talking about most one of the most difficult calls to make at, at any level of basketball, but uh, this young man's going to have an opportunity here for that three-point play. Foul was on Amir Mohammed, and that is his second foul tonight. And a good look there at A.J. Brown, the sophomore from Orlando, Florida. Lead at 10. Clayton battles inside, and Troy with the basketball as Muhammad controls. Ahead to the baseline, good reversal. Eugene's three off the mark, and the rebound yanked out of the air by the leaping Sharif Mitchell. And here come the Bobcats. It's a four-on-four -four game right now. As on the other end of the floor, Fields and James are on the deck. And back runs Troy with the basketball. It's Muhammad powering to the hoop and is fouled on the way to the cup. And it's on Ohio. It's on Elmore James. Sam Hyman, you've been down around that Troy huddle. What have you gathered from listening in to Scott Cross and his staff? Yeah, Marty, just a second ago, Greg Young, the new associate head coach who has ties with Scott Cross at UT Arlington, he basically took control at the very end of that huddle and said, guys, we need layups. We have to get layups right now. And clearly they're attacking the rim. And Muhammad, who's been doing the majority of that here in the second half, steps to the charity stripe and knocks down the first one. Lead at nine now for Ohio as it seesaws back and forth from about 10 to eight point lead here in the second half. Again, the lead's been as many as 20 in this game. But if you're Jeff Bowles, you just you just can't get comfortable right now. Too many things are on the line in your home opener here. You got to get your players to, to play at an efficient level at both ends of the floor. First ever meeting between these two programs. Ohio and Troy, the Mid-American Conference Sunbelt Conference Challenge Series. Dave was telling you earlier they will reset the matchups in January. Counted in a foul inside to A.J. Clayton, working strong around the basket as he turns and finishes and will head to the free throw line. Well, if there's an inside presence, it's A.J. Clayton at 6'8", 225 pounds. This time he got himself in good position there. A direct feed from the top of the key, strong finish. Able to lean in on Sang and hit the shot, and Sang picks up the foul, his first. Seventh team on the Troy Trojans. Clayton's free throw is down. Eight points for the six foot eight, 225 pound junior, along with four rebounds tonight. And back run to Trojans quickly, Mohammed. He and Mitchell dueling on the wing, a great defense by Sharif Mitchell. There's that on-ball yep. defense that's his strength, and it, played, it paid big dividends right, yeah, right again, there. We're talking about hands and the ability to move your feet to stay in front of a, a very quick defender as well, and you'll see it right here. Hands on the ball, creates that turnover. I love the emotion that Mitchell's played with here this evening. And one of his first appearances here in a Bobcat uniform. Well, we saw a little bit of that in the game or the exhibition game last week against Otterbein, and certainly a little different animal. I mean, no disrespect to Otterbein at all, but again, a Division Three team which doesn't have the athletic ability, certainly that Troy has. But it was good to get these guys on the floor in front of a crowd at the convo, especially the newcomers, Mitchell, Ike Cornish. Shot clock at two as Cornish board balls a jump shot attempt. And on the... Shot clock violation. The Trojans will get the ball back. Tate and Conorway will check in. Jeff Bowles. Bobcats going with those new pullovers this year. The coaching staff with yeah. script Bobcats on the oh, on the chest. Throwback a little bit yeah. with that Bobcats 
Bobcat in script. Yeah, Coach Bowles saying we're even going to see the paw come back as well, too, the Bobcat paw. Against pressure, James. Nice turn, lean, yeah. and finish. Yeah. Delmore James now with 17 points. He and A.J. Brown, 35 points, 13 of 20 from the field. Five of seven at the free throw line, eight rebounds. Well, there's your perimeter players, obviously. Jalen Hunter kind of having somewhat of an off night from the perimeter, one for nine, one for seven from three, but uh, we know what he's capable of as, as well. Mitchell just picked up his fourth personal foul for Ohio. It's the eighth team foul against the Bobcats. A.J. Sheldon will come in, replacing Sharif Mitchell. And at the line will be Tate and Connorway. Of course, A.J. Sheldon's story is well documented. His sister, J.C., all Big Ten at Ohio State. His father, Dwayne, director of athletics at Dublin Kaufman High School. And I think A.J. has developed himself in the offseason from a, a shooting perspective. I know that's something he struggled with last year, but, you know, it's something that I know he he's going to get in the gym. He's going to shoot a 1,000 shots a day. He's gotten a little stronger, I think, in the upper body, and I think that's going to pay some dividends for him as well. Lead at 11 for Ohio, 65-54 as we hit the nine-minute mark of this second half here in Athens at the Convocation Center. Bobcats go on the road Saturday night. They will travel up to Northeast Ohio and take on the Cleveland State Vikings in a 6 o'clock tip. James explodes to the baseline and leans in. The shot won't stay down. Oh, a hard finish on the floor there. It's going down hard and slow getting up as play continues to the other side. And official Courtney Green is going to stop play as Theo Sang went down very hard. So play back in after Sang is helped off the floor. He will head right to the athletic training area back behind the benches and underneath the floor area here at the Convocation Center. Connorway on the inbound, the step through, the kick to the corner for the fields three off the back iron. And an offensive rebound keeps the ball on the Troy side of the floor and a whistle and a foul on Ohio. AJ Clayton, second foul. Second foul on A.J. Clayton. One of the things that Ohio did so very well last year was win in this building, 14-1 and one last year. Yeah, we talked about it one of our focus points, Marty. You know, you come into this building, you're going to have to play really, really well to win because uh, they're going to make it, the Bobcats will, are going to make it very, very tough on you. James, the rebound for Ohio. And really, that's the key to your success. You you have to hold serve at home. You have to win your games at right. home, and hopefully you can split on the road. If you do that, you're going to have a chance to, to be in a good spot and have a chance to go to Cleveland uh, for the MAC tournament, that's for sure. Bobcats 10-8 and eight last year in the MAC, and you think about it, they won 14 games in this building, and they won 19 overall last year. Out high, Hunter rotating around the defense. Shot knocked away, ball knocked away. Last touch by Hunter in front of the Bobcats bench. And we will head to an official timeout with exactly eight minutes left in tonight's affair here in Athens. Oh, consistently every game, but uh, I'm sure Jeff Bowles is pleased right now with the performance of these guys. Theo Sang is back on the Troy bench after being 10 to 2, after tumbling to the floor hard. Looks like he's moving all right as he sits down. Eight minutes to go in the game as Troy went bound the basketball. And there's a good look at Sang right there. And the Trojans with the basketball as Tate and Connorway will work his way up the floor. Bumps bodies with Hunter. And a travel on Rigsby as he shuffled his feet on the wing, trying to get himself set to make his move to the basket. And the turnover, the 15th of the game against Troy. And again, just six in this game for Ohio. There you see the second half turnovers and the grand total tonight. You know, against a pressure defensive team that Troy is, is really, that's what they're built on defensively, trying to force turnovers. 
you know, give this Bobcat team a lot of credit for maintaining composure and handling the basketball and valuing the basketball, at least up to this point. Sheldon and Clayton play catch on the wing. Out high now, Hunter will step up and launch the three that's off the mark. Jackson fields the rebound for Troy. Rebounding numbers in the game tonight. Troy has out-rebounded Ohio by 10, 34-24. Good move by Rigsby, pulls mm -hmm. up and scores over J, uh, eight, uh, A.J. Sheldon. Yeah, created a little space there, just enough to get his lift up for that little 12-foot jumper. On the inbound, a foul as Ohio got the ball into the hands of Hunter, and he was bumped from behind by Spud Eugene. Eugene with his second. Miles Brown back into the Ohio lineup as A.J. Sheldon will sit down. And Jalen Hunter stepping to the stripe. That's the seventh team foul on the Troy Trojans. Hunter coming into this year, 36 points away from 1,000 in his career. Has just seven tonight, so it is highly unlikely he'll hit that mark tonight. But sometime in the very near future, oh, yeah. he will surpass that. Miles Brown entered the game tonight. There's a good look at both of them right there. Brown entered tonight, 296 from 1,000 in his career. He has four this evening. And Ohio's lead at 11 as we roll to the seven-minute mark. Good take to the basket by Connorway, who just went right down the lane and scored with the right hand. And on the inbound, we have one of our outside officials, Josh White, coming in to kind of clean things up a little bit. There was a little extracurricular activity after the basket. Is that what you call that, partner? That's what I'd call it, yeah. Okay. Connorway now with 12 points. And... 11 minutes of court time in this game. And the lead at nine with six and a half to play. Inside now Clayton and a blocking foul as Clayton was going down the lane. It's on Connorway. Yeah, Jalen Hunter found Clayton kind of floating right inside of the paint area there, delivered the ball, but uh, defender not set. Uh, and I think you could see, too, by the reaction on A.J. Clayton's face, he wasn't really too sure. Yeah. Well, he thinks uh, he, I think he's pretty way, right? sure he got away with one right there. Yeah. <laughs> Had that almost look of disbelief on his face. Uh -huh. 12 points and four rebounds for Connorway. And Clayton knocks down the free throw. Ohio, very good at the free throw line tonight. Bobcats 21 to 24 at the stripe here this evening. A.J. Clayton back to the line. Clayton tonight has made both of his free throws. All four now as he goes two for two in that visit to the stripe. Clayton will sit down as Gabe Wisnitzer comes back into the game. Lead at 11 for Ohio. While all that was going on on the other end of the floor, Theo Sang had to go back to the locker room on the Troy sideline. And the Trojans will bring the, uh, bring the ball up the floor. The return matches in this MAC Sunbelt Challenge will be determined by the net rankings in January. A.J. Brown, AJ Brown picks up his fourth foul on the Troy side of the floor, and that will put the Trojans at the free throw line as Spud Eugene will get ready to step to the stripe. You know, and as we talked about with the Sun Belt Conference, it's difficult trying to get to certain places, especially in February, but I think that net data ranking will be one thing. I think they'll look at travel, obviously. Now, just so everybody knows, the women are just reversing that up. Right. They go on the road this week to play at the Sun Belt Conference opponents, and then back in February, they'll have their home chance here to play those teams and host them. Do you like these, these, ch these challenge series? Well, you know, obviously some of them are – like the David Gavitt game, they're getting away from them at the major college level now. And this is this was determined probably almost two years ago from a scheduling standpoint they were going to do this. So 
It'll be interesting to see. I, I don't know. I think when you build your schedule, uh, every game matters, obviously. But you try to build it to the best you can. I know Jeff Bowles wanted to put a Power 5 conference opponent in his schedule. It just didn't work out this year. But, you know, those are those are dates that get locked in now. So you can't, you can't have any games on certain dates. And that's two a year now from a non-conference standpoint. Bob you Katz. like him, partner? I, I, I do. I, 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 we were talking about scheduling as A.J. Brown oh has his shot rejected. Good defense inside, and Troy pushes back. Uh, for programs like this at the mid-major level, as Rigsby misses the look at the three, good rebound by Mohammed, but turns the ball over to Wisnitzer, and the Bobcats will come back up the Yeah, floor. that would have been a big three right there. They could have cut this lead down to six. Right now it's at nine. A.J. Brown misses on the baseline. And back come the Trojans with the basketball. Eugene weaving his way up the floor. The extra pass for the three that's up and good by Marcus Rigsby Jr. And Jeff Bowles wants a timeout. As Troy has battled back to within a half dozen at 69-63. I think it's good. And, uh, it's a two-year contract that they'll do. So I'm sure there'll be some reevaluation of it at the end of each of the years to see if this is something they'd like to continue. Ohio starting to find itself in a little bit of foul troubles. This game winds down with 5.16 left. We'll show you that as you can see right there. A.J. Brown, Sharif Mitchell each with four. Miles Brown has three. The jump pass to Elmore James, who's left wide open and scores. Boy, what a great look by Sharif Mitchell. I was just looking at Scott Cross as he walked back down the floor. He had his arms extended, his, his, his palms skyward. As if, guys, you can't leave him open. The three by Elmore James puts him one off his career high as penetrating and going inside and scoring for Troy is Spud Eugene. Elmore James is high as 21. He set that last year up at Toledo. And that jumper a moment ago puts him at the 20-point mark. Lead at seven for Ohio with 4.20 to go in the game. Shot clock under 10 and out high. A little bit of a, almost a block in the back yeah. type shove there by Troy's Marcus Rigsby. Second foul on Rigsby Jr. You know, Marty, we saw that graphic on the foul trouble that Ohio has with the perimeter players. That... That may be a direct correlation now to the pressure defense that this program might have to play this year to have some, which they will have success doing it. But the downside of it is that you've got guys out there putting full court pressure on, kind of helter skelter, and you're going to get yourself into some foul trouble. Obviously, they have some depth, but you need your best players on the floor at all times, that's for sure. A.J. Brown, after what looked to be a deep breath, Free throw, rattles around and comes out. Here's how we right got here. to the yep. free throws, yeah. Yep. That's a pretty good shot right there. Uh, I think Gabe Wisnitzer was a, a part of that as well, I, too, I right think there. So. And that was that was a call we were talking about in the first half. That's mm -hmm. the emphasis on the officials turning into players on those pick and rolls and those outside screens. Free throw in and out. Troy with the rebound. Bobcat lead at seven. Next whistle will take us to an official's timeout. Runner is short, and A.J. Brown the rebound for Ohio. Jalen Hunter will set up shop at the Bobcat logo. Trying to lose Eugene out high, uses a Wisnitzer pick. Manages to keep the dribble hot, shot clock's at six. Jump pass to James, shot clock at three. James back to Hunter with two, with one for three. Back iron, no. Elmore James, strong offensive rebound, leads in and flips the ball in. Uh, right place at the right time for Elmore James, but he got that little finger roll over the top of the rim. A.J. Brown now with 20 points for Ohio. James and Brown with... 40 points between them. Out high Connor Way and Mitchell 
And Mitchell just picked up a personal foul. And for Sharif Mitchell, that is his fifth. So his evening is over at the 3.05 mark. That takes us to an official timeout. The other factor for this Bobcat team. At the line will be Tate and Connorway for the Trojans of Troy. Sunbelt Conference with 14 teams now after they expanded. James Madison, Marshall, Old Dominion. Free throw rolls around and out. Wisnitzer the rebound for Ohio. Of course, the football aspect of it so big in the realignment for the Sun Belt. Like James Madison petitioning inside. Gabe Wisnitzer with a nice floater to that. Rolls its way in and he'll head to the free throw line. Yeah, nice find there by uh, Jalen Hunter. Kept his head up. Excellent little pocket pass, bounce pass to the big fella for the finish there. I was referencing that James Madison football team. They're unbeaten right now. They're trying to get the NCAA to allow them to go to a bowl and evade the two-year waiting period when you move from the FCS level to the FBS level. They were turned down back in the spring. There was Nitzer free throw, circles around and falls. And the... Bobcat lead has grown back to double digits here with 2.44 to go in the game. Muhammad, the step back three. Air ball that will float harmlessly out of bounds, and Ohio will get the basketball back. Mentioned the Bobcats going to Cleveland on Saturday to face Cleveland State. Ohio still has non-conference games left with Detroit Mercy. They head to the Bahamas for three games around Thanksgiving. Then back home for a three-game stretch as Miles Brown steps back and knocks down what would look to be your basic exclamation point right there with the three-point and mm. gliding down the lane with a strong wow. take to the hoop was Spud Eugene. And a quick timeout by Scott Cross a, with 13 for Troy. I think it's fair to say this Troy team, they're going to win some games in the Sun Belt. Yeah, just the way they play, Marty, in terms of their defensive presence on the floor. And uh, if anything, I mean, you're, if, if you're Scott Cross, you're going to walk away and think, you know, we hung in there. We could have easily kind of folded the tents there for a while. When Ohio Especially got when that it was big 20, margin. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but uh, they hung in there and you know, they've, uh, they've displayed a good sense of composure as well. Foul on Marcus Rigsby Jr. Ohio last year averaged 78 points a game, and again, that was with Dwight Wilson being the go to guy, averaging 15 points and nine rebounds a game. But I think it's interesting to note. Average 78 points a game last year. Two minutes ago in this game, Dave, they're sitting at 80 points. Yeah, so I guess there's different ways to get it done. And, uh, you know, credit to Coach Bowles and his staff. They've, and I'm sure there was a lot more conversation in the offseason knowing their personnel. How, how are we going to play this season? You know, and without a big post guy like Dwight Wilson in there, are we going to be able to do some things and manufacture some points? But, uh, I think more importantly, you mentioned the numbers last year, 78.8 for Ohio. You know, they gave up 73 points a game. So that's where they got to be a little careful this year. I don't think the margin for error is going to be as large. They're going to have to really tighten it up at the defensive end. The two made free throws by Hunter puts him in double figures with 10. So a quartet of Bobcats with 10 or more points. Hunter now with 11 after making the free throws. Lead at 14 with two minutes to go. And inside was Nitzer hit with a personal foul as Miles Rigsby backed him down to the block. And you can see Jeff Bowles. <laughs> I think he was asking Lou Horvath what he thought of the foul there, the longtime public address announcer here at the Convocation Center as well at Peden Stadium. I'm sure Lou would have told him, too, exactly how oh, yeah. he felt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 
Would have been one of those times where Lou got agitated, as he likes to tell fans in Peden Stadium on third down situations. Free throw short. Scott Cross's team will travel across the country bright and early tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock out of Columbus, and they're on their way to Corvallis, Oregon to play Oregon State. Well, it's a long trip, obviously, um, playing against a major college, Power 5 conference, but uh, I'm sure the payday is probably pretty good, too, and, you know, a lot of the mid-majors have to find a way to subsidize that budget, and that's one way to do it. Ohio calls a timeout with 151 left in the game, and Oregon State policies and what they're thinking about, and obviously they're happy too, right? The schools in the American Conference, and I can't say that about a lot of conferences right now. Exactly. Right? Exactly. I mean, there's some schools that are wondering what the heck is going on out there. <laughs> well, Troy will see one on Friday night at Oregon State. There you go. <laughs> What are we supposed to do with ourselves now? Play back in after the timeout. 145 to go in the game. The Ohio lead at 13 points. A.J. Brown inside. A couple of ball fakes and goes off the glass and in. A.J. Brown with 22 points. A.J. Brown's career high is 28. That was against Ball State in the MAC tournament last year. And A.J. Brown will be guilty of the personal fouls. We come to the... Troy into the floor with 90 seconds left in this one. Well, the beauty of A.J. Brown and the ability to, to handle the basketball in traffic, make slicing and accelerated moves to the basket. He's a, a tough guy to guard at the offensive end, and I think uh, a lot of teams, as they continue to scout Ohio University, are going to realize when they go in and play this team that they're going to have their hands full on the perimeter. We've got the some wrong. weapons out there that yeah. are really, really dangerous. David was the wrong A.J. Instead of A.J. Brown, it was A.J. Clayton with the foul. And back to the line, Miles Rigsby. Lead at 14 for Ohio. And the miss yanked out of the area in traffic by A.J. Brown. This has evolved into a rather long game now. We're a little two hours plus into this one here tonight. Inside, Brown finishes for Ohio. 24 points for A.J. Brown. And up the floor comes Eugene. Loses his balance, loses the basketball. And Troy is a minute six away from losing the game. In a long game, part of what? I mean, fouls? Yeah. That, I'm trying to figure it out. I mean, uh, seven o'clock start. 20 minutes start. Yeah. Four, four and a half, right? Yeah. We haven't switched that, have we? No. <laughs> a lot of other things are getting switched around. <laughs> Inside, Miles Brown with a nice recovery. A.J. Clayton had a hand on the loose ball momentarily on the baseline as we're under a minute left to go. Connor Way bounces ahead for Eugene, 44 seconds left, good run into the lane now, too strong off the glass by Miles Rigsby, and Miles Brown the rebound for Ohio, and with 38 seconds left. We didn't get a chance to mention it at the top of the broadcast, but a, a very poignant moment at the start of the game tonight before the ball was tipped off. There was a moment of silence held here in the Convocation Center after the uh, the passing of former Bobcat great Brandon Hunter back in September, passed away on September the 12th, and a very nice moment, a, a moment of silence and remembrance, a nice photo of Hunter on the video board here at the Convocation Center, and really a, a guy who meant so much to so many with this Ohio basketball program. I know it was a loss that hit Jeff Bowles very hard very much uh, when so, that yeah. news came back in September, and uh, he will be missed by the Bobcat basketball program and Bobcat Nation. Important number right there, 17 turnovers by Troy. Ohio scored 18 points off those 17 turnovers. And the lead just, oh, by the way, happens to be 18 points. 
Jeff Bowles will substitute out A.J. Brown. Will leave with 24 points. Very good debut for yes. A.J. Brown. Aiden Hathaway's back. A.J. Shelton is back. Ike Cornish is back. For the remaining 33 seconds of this one. Step back by Eugene. Hathaway the rebound for Ohio. At his pocket pick by Miles Rigsby. Wild flip shot. And this is the rebound for Ohio. 15 seconds left. And Troy made a run at the Bobcats in the second half. Ohio had pushed the lead to as high as 20 in the first half. But the Bobcats able to withstand the rush by the Trojans. And Ohio will win its season opener once again. The Bobcats home winners. The overall 555th win in the Convocation Center for Ohio. And Jeff Bowles' team gets out of the game. With